Hi, how are you? I thought today might be a good day to tell you a bit more about how I started making jewelry. Many of you asked me this question, so brace yourselves, today I'll tell you all about it. Like many others, I used to make jewelry when I was smaller and as a teenager. I liked creating my own necklaces and earrings using colorful beads, feathers and wires. Mostly cheap or upcycled materials, so in other words, high end. <laughs> I would layer the necklaces and bracelets and add matching earrings, just for fun. Well, who am I kidding? It was my religion. <laughs> During high school, five times did I leave for school without earrings on. Yeah. I counted. Your girl ain't messing around, okay? Okay, let's move forward. While I was studying history of art, I was mostly interested in classes about arts and crafts and anything that would be even remotely connected with accessories and jewelry. But no hints taken at that time, nope. It was only after I graduated that I realized I don't want to pursue history of art anymore. But I wasn't entirely sure what I want to do. It wasn't clear to me yet. Jarek and I moved to Scotland and that's when I learned more about Etsy. I instantly decided to start making beaded jewelry and open a shop. I ordered a bunch of gemstone beads, started learning about business and everything related and finally jumped in. Oh, and I think the decisive moment was when I discovered the world of makers on Instagram. Yeah, I was in my dudes and dudettes. I was so in. I've also joined the free business classes in Glasgow called Women into Business and Business Gateway both great and very helpful at that initial stage. And not long after, I opened my first Etsy shop called Elven Valley. <laughs> I was learning how to take product photos, do the marketing and run my small business. I remember my very first sale. It was a pair of teapot rose quartz earrings. The sale came in at 2 a.m. in the morning and I was so overwhelmed, you guys. I got out of bed to fulfill this order immediately so I could ship it in the morning. I was just so happy. And although making beaded jewelry was fun, this still wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to melt metal cut and solder, but I had this belief in me that I couldn't, that it was too late and only people who came from families of jewelers or studied this could do it. So yeah, it was until I found other smiths on Instagram and discovered that beautiful word in their bio, self-taught. Do you know that feeling? When everything drops within you, your heart stops, yet it beats so fast. You clench your jaw even though it has dropped to the floor moments earlier and your thoughts are completely shaken but also very clear. Yeah, me neither. Never felt that way. <laughs> so, yeah. It was at that moment she knew she's about to go broke. No, just kidding. I had to wait with any purchases until we moved to Bristol. That's when I've ordered my very first set of tools and supplies and some books. I started watching YouTube videos and analyzing photos of workshops on Instagram. I was making lists of tools I needed. I was saving videos, blog posts and photos while taking notes, of course. I was aching to start making <laughs> but at that time we were renting a room for a short period and I couldn't do any smithing in the flat. So I found local classes that would teach me to use the torch and make simple jewelry. I tried sewing, shaping, soldering and polishing in the safe workshop environment and I really recommend that option. After that we moved to our own flat and I was able to jump in both feet. I was constantly learning, writing ideas, watching tons of videos and, of course, practicing. I slowly started connecting with other makers on Instagram too. And I've learned a lot through trial and error. The generous advice I got from others, whether about techniques, creative process or pricing, was extremely helpful. 
There was and still is a lot of trial and error. Some things will work, some won't. Most important thing is to allow time. There is no overnight success. Behind every sudden success is a person that was practicing and mastering their craft for years. I mean, yeah, there are cases where people grow super fast and good for them, but it's just not reality for everyone. It takes time to blossom and you don't want your business and art to be wonky and short-lived. You want it to have a strong base, to be honest and lasting. We all start somewhere and everyone's journey is different. Make the most out of your circumstances and abilities and I'm sure you will do great. Enjoy making art and be proud of yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Stay healthy and safe everyone and I really hope you're well. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye!